Hi, I'm Jim Austin. Welcome to Angler's Paradise. To the right of me is the Big Muddy, better known as the Mississippi River. We'll be filming here today, so stay tuned to Angler's Paradise. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Angler's Paradise. I want to show you how to rig a Carolina rig. He said, what in the world is a Carolina rig? Well, a Carolina rig consists of uh, a, a, a weight, two beads, or you can put as many beads as you like, a swivel, and about two feet of uh, monofilament line. Now, personally, I like to use a spinning reel because to me, it's, that's my confidence factor, and I can set the hook with it. I'm going to use a half ounce bullet weight. Very simple. Just put the uh, line through the weight. Get one. That one's kind of, the hole is kind of messed up on that one. Let's see can I get when I get, get the weight through there. You know, his eyes get old on you can't half see anymore, but we're going to make it work. Let's open it up. Sometimes you have to take a hook and open these things up, but you want to get that line down in there. And you're going to put your weights on it, I'm going to put your beads on it, your swivel, and your line, you'll be ready to go. A lot of people say, why they call it a Carolina rig? Well, it originated in the state of Carolina. People started using this rig called a Carolina rig in, a, in, the, in that particular state, and it became a very effective rig. If I can ever get the line in there, we can get started. It became very, very effective. People was able to fish fast, they could stay on the bottom, and... Uh, if you're fishing on a lot of gravel, a uh, rocky area, it works tremendously good because with all the beads and the weights, it has a tendency to give a sound off. And a lot of times bass will mistake that as being crawfish. There we go. It's being crawfish. Any kind of bead is fine. I'm using two clear beads, so you could use two red, black. It really doesn't matter. As long as you got those beads on, the beads serve two purposes. One, it gives you a chatter noise which we think, or I think, it uh, attracts the fish because they, th they think maybe it's a crawfish or something that's moving around on the bottom. And two, it keeps your line from being frayed by the weight from sliding up and down on your line. So it, it's a two-fold purpose here, and it just seemed to work real good when you put a bead on. I've seen individuals try to do it without a bead, I mean without a swivel, but it just don't seem to give you the same effect. You know what I mean? After you get your, your swivel, your weight, and your beads off, just tie it. I like a polymer knot. It's real simple. And if you don't know what a polymer knot is, if you buy any kind of your brand name fishing line, a lot of times on the back of, back of the box that you buy, they'll give you instruction as how to tie a polymer knot. I like about two feet of monofilament line. Depending on the structure that I'm using, I'll go as low as 8 pound test line. Very seldom I'll go over 12 pounds test lines, between 8 and 12 pounds. I want a good line. I want a good line that can take some abrasion. That way I know it's going to hold up in the event I hook a fish and have to bring it through the structure. Hook, well the hook's going to depend, the size of the hook is going to basically depend on what size of lure that, uh, that you'll be using. I'm going to use, today I'm going to use a two dog hook two alt hook and you know I'm not getting any name brands but I will in due time we're not concerned about that right now we're concerned about the fact that you make that we make sure that you tie your Carolina rig properly about two feet of line again go with another polymer knot real simple just make one one loop and a tie bring your hook back through the open loop Pick up the slack, there you are. You're ready to go fishing. 
fishing a, a, a run in. I'm here in Centennial Lake in, Miss, in Mississippi, Biloxi, not Biloxi, but Vicksburg, Mississippi. And uh, I found a little run in, and I think fish are holding on it. There's a drop off. There's a drop off uh, where it drops from four feet into 12 feet of water. So I'm going to use a Carolina rig with a watermelon seed lizard. Now let's see if we can find some fish. Let's see if we can find some fish on this point. Looks good. Look at that. That's fine. That's going to, you're going to find you're going to get a lot of, I'm a lot of strikes with the Carolina rig. There's other rigs such as the Texas rig. We'll get into it later. But for right now, we're going to fish a Carolina rig, and I'm going to show you how to catch fish using a Carolina rig. You see the run in, the opening? We're going to throw into that opening and pull it back to the drop off in hopes that we'll find a school of fish stage in there. Remember, I was talking about the overhand cast for distance. Watching Angler's Paradise. Now I can feel, I can feel the stumps and all the structure that lines the ledge. And when you when you when you, when you come up to the structure and you feel it, it's kind of pause for a second, shake your your, your lure, your lizard in this case. And, uh, and what it does is give that bass an opportunity to catch up with it and make a decision if he wants it. And by shaking it, a lot of times I think that uh, frustrates the bass. And That's what Carolina rig is all about. Take your time, work it through the stumps, and that's the kind of results you'll get. Trust me. Oh, man. Slow down, slow down, baby. Let me get you hooked. We'll put you back in the water. States. I don't know exactly how it all got started, but somewhere in Texas, somebody decided to take a bullet lead, like what I have in my hand, a shank hook, and a piece of plastic. In this case, this is a plastic lizard. Plastic worms are all the same thing. And he rigged it up. Stick your line through the point of the bullet. There's a hole there. I know a lot of you guys are watching the show. You say, oh, heck, we, I did this a lot of times. What is he talking about? This is not for you. It's for the ones who have not did any fishing and they're just getting into fishing. That's the one I'm concerned about. I want this individual to know, to learn how to fish and, and enjoy the sport and catch fish. So for the guys who already know how to tie a Texas rig, watch me anyway. You might learn something. I like to use the Paloma knot. It's a simple matter. Run the line through the eye of the hook right back through, just like I did with the Carolina rig. Make a simple knot, just a simple knot. And 
bring it back through the open loop. And that's basically all you have. That's it. I mean, you just, you want to make one knot. Take the hook, run the hook through the loop, and that's it. Grab the, the line, the loose end of the line, and just pull it tight. Now, I suggest that you maybe use some type of moisture device, maybe saliva for it. That keeps the line from getting hot and, uh, and weaken the line. It, it, the way I pull it then, normally I wouldn't do it that way. I would put some form of moisture. If I just dip it in the water, this would be moisture. But then I pull it, that way the friction won't weaken the line. Uh, you can't tell on that, but you get a 10 pound bass on there. You'll be able to tell then, I can guarantee you. Take your hook, worm, lizard, finesse worms, doesn't matter. Stick it in the, in the head of the, of the worm, bring it back out, and all the way down until it goes past the shank. And just simply stick the hook back into the, the worm. That's it. I, I mean, that's as simple as it can get, but very, very effective when you're catching fish. Now, when will I use? When is a good time to use a Texas reel? Well, now we talked about the Carolina, how you get out on the points where there's not a whole lot of visible structure. You're gonna work the points, you're gonna, you're gonna work it very effective and kind of fast uh, by using the Carolina method. Well, this method is a little bit different. You're, you're now more or less pinpointing where you think the fish are. And you're, gonna just, you're just gonna cast right into those areas where you think the fish are and hope like the devil you get a bite. Okay, let's try it, see can we catch a fish. Right now, uh, I'm gonna be fishing Long the bank, there's grass, grass and, and uh, saw grass. Well, I'm gonna throw over in the grass with my uh, Texas rig and hope God get a strike. It looks real fishable to me. It's that time of the year when fish should be there. The water's rising, which will push the fish shallow. Let's see if we can. Talked about casting. Remember we talked about casting? In this case, I'm gonna use the overhand cast I'm just looking for distance. I pretty much know where I want, want my bait to be. It's a wide enough area that I don't have to be that much concerned about accuracy. So I'm gonna use the overhand cast. Drop it right over in the grass. And with the, and with the Texas rig, uh, anytime you're fishing grass, whether it be a worm or lizard, you wanna kinda of swim that worm. You don't want to just let it sink down into the grass. You wanna kinda of swim it. Kind of bring it there, kinda of slow. And if you get to the end, let it drop. Normally, that's when you're going to get your strike because what has happened, the fish is back up in the grass. When you threw your, when you threw your, your lure now, or your worm in this case, he felt it. He felt it. Even if he didn't see it, he felt the, 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 the impact of your worm hitting the water, and he immediately turns around to see what's going on. But when you start dragging, he's going to start following that lure out of the, out of the uh, grass, let it pass, whatever kind of structure you're fishing. And when you get to the edge where you're coming out of the structure, normally, that's where he's going to take it. So let's try it again. I didn't get a strike this time. Let's try another strike. Give him maybe two or three good casts. If you don't get anything, then find another place. Here I want to be a little bit more precise where I'm going to put my lure. So I'm going to go with the flipping knife. Right. There you go. Ah. Good fish, good fish. That's a great fish. That's a great fish. Look, a, a little trick. If you don't damage his gills, but if you're kind of when you grab the fish, just kind of stick your finger right underneath the gill plate, but don't stick your fingers all up in the gills. A lot of times the fish will kind of melt out. It makes it much easier for you to pull the hook out as opposed to trying to hold him by the lip. Let's get him back in the water for you. Let's put him back. pick up one crankbait and expect for this lure to catch fish at all times. There's a science to using crankbait 
And if you're ever going to become very effective, you're going to have to learn how to use crankbait. We're going to cover some of the things, but it's impossible for me to cover everything about crankbait. But I'm going to try to touch on some of the most important things that you need to know in order to catch fish with the crankbait. talked about crankbait, but now let me show you how to use a crankbait. You see this rod? See how limber that rod is? See how limber that rod You want your good limber rod. Some of those old crappy rods that you use for spot fishing or crappy fishing or even brim fishing, it's not a bad rod to use when using a crankbait because of the fact when that fish come up and take the crankbait, you want that rod to give. You want to give that fish a chance to suck that lure in because if you got a stiff rod and he feels, he feels the tension, he's gonna spit it out. I've actually seen fish, seen, seen largemouth bass, I've actually seen largemouth bass take the crankbait all the way in their mouth, close their mouth, and then blow it back out. And the angler never felt the strike. But with a limo rod, you don't feel, the, the fish will not feel you, you don't feel the tension. You'll hold the, hold the fish, hold the fish. He'll hold the lure in his mouth longer, give you an opportunity to set the hook. Let's see if we can catch one. Today is cloudy, fish are kind of scouted. Um, right now we're, we're fishing around a pier, but I don't think you're gonna catch fish on the pier today because uh, they're not looking for a place to hide. They're just roaming, roaming the banks. So I'm gonna fish between this pier and the next one, and, and I believe that we'll probably catch a fish somewhere in that area. Let's try it and see. Now you notice the color that I'm using. You know, we talked about color. I'm using a, using a dark green with a bright chartreuse uh, belly. And the reason being, the type of water that I'm fishing, it's not extremely clear, but it's not that stain either. This color seems to work best for this color water. And also the wobble that I have, this time of the year, this the type of wobble that I want my lure to, to give me, this lure will do it for me. So let's see if we catch a fish. You notice I hold my rod tip down. I like. You, you notice me, it seems like every fish I catch, I hold my rod tip down. The reason why I do that, I'm trying to keep that fish from breaking water. If you're holding your rod tip up like this and the fish comes out of water and, and shakes his head, a lot of times he can shake the lure out of his mouth. Now it looks good for TV, but it's not good when you're fishing a tummy and you lose a 10 pound bass because you're trying to be pretty. So I like to hold my rod down because when he hit, I want to keep it down in the water like that. Now, it's left for you how you want to hold your rod. I'm only going to teach you how to catch the fish. It's left for you to land the fish. Oh, man. Oh, wow. It's a little bit of a dirty tree. Mm. Ah, it wasn't pretty. But I got the fish. That's all I'm counting. <laughs> At a time. Okay. My director's telling me it's time to go but I've had a great time today, and I certainly hope that you have too. Remember all the things we talked about. Carolina rig, Texas rig, crankbait. Fishing here on the Centennial Lake in historic Vicksburg, Mississippi has been nothing but pure pleasure for me, and I certainly hope that you've enjoyed it. So don't forget those techniques, because they'll go, they will come in handy at some point in time when you're out there fishing. You got to go. But I think I'm gonna stay around, because I'm having too much fun. <clears throat> that one is right down. See you next week. <laughs>